How do you save a game where it feels like you can die at every given moment? Well, I have this amazing Maligos game where that exactly happens. I am not really hireling that much, but I'm able to beat a hireless late game using some small tactics. So this video is filled with top pause the video moments if you want to try and figure out some optimal plays that has some difficult lines. So uh, I hope it's going to be fun. We do play Maligos, which is amazing with tokens. It's a double token lobby. Now we didn't find any tokens yet, usually hear power for them. So you just take strong cards. I'll still hear power for tokens and uh, see if, you know, we can find them early. So we can actually just get insane tempo with this here power. So we find a really early triple, which is like weird uh and it is so weird that i think it is bait there's no real way i could take this it's just pretty pretty awkward if i ever want to freeze and then just level and i can't really buy anything i'd rather find a token which we did hit because i didn't freeze so that was uh the first play to spot that there's not that that, that, that triple is probably bait and you shouldn't be taking it uh, and now again i'm just trying to hear power for better cards and i could hear power in the shop trying to find the north token as well i could either hear power the stabby cat and roll twice but i like this acolyte a lot so i think i would prefer here powering the demon in the shop trying to head um you know another token or a triple onto the demon now because i could freeze it or a pair onto acolyte uh, something useful and we do hit a token that meaning we can just you know either buy the token or buy the taunt and freeze and we are pretty pretty good setup you know strong avenge cards we uh, we got a pair lined up already and another token um, and one thing though that I want you to ask you guys is what one drop do you think will stick around on the board until the end game so I'm gonna stay on tier one here I'm gonna have a board full of one drop pairs uh, what one drop do you expect will be here up until the end so what one drop is one that you could actually maybe consider going Going more often and that you know might be overlooked um okay that's that's all i'm gonna say place your bet so you'll see at the end of the video uh so we hero powered pretty bad hero power first and then we hit the acolyte so i couldn't hero power my 2-1 body but i just bought a chroma wing i guess and we have two more pairs here now usually this is the turn where you sell double level i was considering selling the merlock and double leveling but because of the two other pairs and because we don't have a triple lined up right away I think it might just be better to stay down by both of these and again because of that hero power being trash if that hero power gave me a triple definitely i could have just leveled and taken a four uh, but yeah instead i'm just taking these two and you could level again i want to roll trying to optimize my odds of hitting one of these triples you know one of these tier one triples and i do hit one which is a token one and now we're in a really interesting spot so uh it's zero gold to level we have eight gold how do we do this turn? Pause the video and try and figure it out for yourself. Now, because uh, it took me a while, I think I used the full 70 seconds trying to figure out how I get, you know, all my economy out of this and get my triples, uh, stuff like that. So I hear power discord, it ends up, you know, just being a sun bacon so I can sell it. I do want to play my chroma wing because my level it gives me attack, but I also want to play my Murloc because otherwise I don't summon a token if I just buy the triple. So I play the Murloc first, give up on one of the pairs, so that way I get at least the money back from the Murloc, uh, from the token, and uh, have the board space. Then I play my Chroma Wings that I want to buff with the gem so they get more attack when I double level, and uh, there we go. I had to sell something anyway if I wanted to double level here and buy the triple, so I had to give up on the pair. Uh, there was no other way around it really unless I don't double level but then I'm super behind because it's already turn six so one triple in hand two more pairs on the board uh, the chroma wing and the taunt pair so I don't think I need three more one drop pairs which is why I gave up onto the demon I think the taunts and the chroma wings are just better to have right now um, especially since I'm leveling so much so now I you could go for a four for revenge but there's no elementals so there's no dazzling light spawn and I I think with so many triples lined up, going for fives or sixes is probably correct. And probably sixes in this case, it's a decent tier six lobby. Uh, uh, I mean, there's no Eliza, actually. It's kind of iffy, but just because you have so many triples lined up, I just like taking multiple sixes more than multiple fives or multiple fours, because you can way easier stabilize and hire all the lobby. So we're in a decent spot. We take some damage here from the Mutinous because, well, we do have a one drop board and are holding a triple while well, they are playing for tempo but this is a turn where we can possibly pop off so we can just level um maybe even get a hero power f uh, a triple from hero power here so if we hear power the uh, icky imp and then we have two sixes on turn eight this is sadly our uh, hero powers are not really amazing so i'll just have to you know make do with a sun baking relaxer again uh and the six drops are a magnum zep or Kalik. now magnum gets three adapts but uh, it's still a relatively early Kalig, not super early. Usually Kalig goes pretty slow, but I only take Kalig goes because you have a Bronze Sword in the shop and another Battlecry, so it works with our economy. We can triple sell here to buy the Battlecry 
have a full board. We have double chroma wings still and four dragons and two more pairs. So another reason why I took Kalygos is because I have a lot of pairs. Kalygos is slow on its own, but if I triple into Nadina or into second Kalygos, it can actually work. So if I had one triple only, I would never take Kalygos here. I think I would just take a Mogadon and try and high roll uh, or set up for a tempo um, mid game because look, look at this. We're facing a Hook Tusk who is also playing Tempo Beast, dealing 15 damage to us. We're at 12 and damage cap is no longer saving us. Now we're scared. And we just have a stupid Kalygos. If we play like three or four Battle Cries, we don't even get that much stats. So luckily, I'm able to hit one of the other one drop triples. It's the, the Chroma Wing. Not into Caligos and Adina though, uh, these are pretty bad, Hamul or Goldrin doesn't do anything, so I'm taking the, uh, I mean, um, Felbat and uh, Goldrin nothing, I'm taking the Hamul because I can hero power it as, as well, trying to hit Caligos and Adina still, we miss, instead we got a stupid Chalga, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to play just the tempo board at this point, because if I just try and force dragons here, uh, I'm, I'm pretty dead. We do hit the other triple, which is pretty good. Now, Razigor is obviously a good tempo chord here. And we miss again onto both Kalig and Nadina. So we have no more triples. We exhausted all of our potential. I'm not taking a pair on Chalga. It's too slow. Like, it's a pretty bad card. My Xen has a poison that can be reborn. The poison in this meta is super good. And now, hopefully, you understand the title of this video and the concept of... Uh, you know, if you're scared of dying, what should you do? Because we tripled into Kali, which is slow, into two other trash cards from 12 HP, and we see some other people high rolling uh, pretty hard. This guy is double uh, Metrex, which is reasonable in size, and just like a mediocre Magdal and Demon. We lose the fight by 1 HP, so uh, we now have 2 HP left. This is stun damage on my face. Maybe there's a ghost I can face, and then we could consider. I don't know, leveling or doing something. There is a ghost, we face them, it's the Alex, and now I have to think of what to do. Uh, although if I level, I could just be dead. Because like, I'm I'm so weak, I think, compared to everyone else. I'm here powering the troll guy, it doesn't do anything for me on this board, right? I'm not playing with gem synergies whatsoever. Uh, the Murloc is gonna be useful since I'm probably pivoting into poison. So the first tip that I would give is if you are kind of stuck, and you see people are just playing big boards, big stats, Going with poison is generally just a good idea. So getting the Seffen online. Uh, the Seffen also enables you to find lookouts and brands into a Malakadon. So that's another big uh, plus of Seffen that you can possibly, you know, try and just high roll into your sixth tool. Now I'm triple selling here to buy the brand and the pair on Razigor. I could have considered Spore, but instead I thought the pair might be more useful in case I do hit Nadina. Uh, or triple it next turn. Um, no, it's top four already, three people dead, so we do most of the time gain MMR depending on your uh, rank. Uh, and we do hear power into Lookout, which was why I hear power of four, meaning I can probably level here. This board never beats Hook Dust, like we're mega weak. The Razigors, the, the Caligos, and the Bronze Sword, and they're all very weak in size and in stats, so we. I, I just ended up selling both the Razigors, so that way I can try and find Amalgadons, which is my only out, I feel like, realistically. Hit one Amalgadon, hit, I guess, a second Zephyr, which isn't horrible, it's more poison. Uh, and I'm able to, um, you know, maybe try and get a fixed Amalgadon. So if you have a brand early, uh, or early, if you have a brand at some point and you have some one of a menagerie setup, always go to six with Lookout, trying to hit Dawns. It's one of the best ways that you can actually stabilize. And our Dawn is not fixed, it didn't get a shield, but it still has poison. Uh, there's no max, so it isn't fixable, but we have an Adina in the shop, which is amazing. So uh, I hear part of six looking for a Mogadon, Sifu Slinger, or Nadina, we hit an Adina. This is a Tempo Hook Tusk Beast player that I remember from earlier. They had a Deferno comp. Uh, they still have the double high main, which is pretty bad against poison, but everything else, if he's just stats, like if he was Makaa Goldrin, uh, we probably can beat that because of how much we have as well. Also keep in mind our Chroma Wing is a massive high attack unit now with the Vine Shield. It's kind of like an Amalgadon, right? Like the 200 attack is pretty much poison. So our one drop Chroma Wing turned into an Amalgadon. So for those of you who guessed that Amalgadon is gonna stick on the board, uh, I mean Amalgadon, Chroma Wing is gonna stick on the board. Congratulations. So now I have, I bought a Lookout just in case we might find another brand to uh, pop off with. I do buy another uh, Max and there's a brand. So I want you to pause the video again. This is another great moment to figure out what the line is. What would you do in this spot? Uh, it's not easy and I think I, uh, it took me a while to consider, but I'm selling both of these dragons. Even though it seems weird to sell your Divine Shield and your Caligals, they don't do anything. Like, you gotta be reasonable and realize that in stats, they don't make up anything. 
anything, right? Like they, they get value traded by literally most cards my opponents have, by poison. So what's the point of keeping them around? Same deal with the um, the uh, Razorgors earlier. So now instead I do find another Magnon. Hopefully it's fixed this time around. And it is. Um, I, I also got Taunt, so it's good to protect my board. I do buy just another poison place, Seffin, I guess. And we made a full switch from our dragon weird... Uh, mid game thing with like Trolga uh, into poison. Now our Nadina didn't pop sadly, and they are they had a cleave. Luckily, it didn't kill my Chroma Wing, but we still end up winning by one plant. Although I think we could have killed them very easily. Um, so this this Nadina is actually pretty huge. It's gonna it could reshield our Amogdon that Salted shields Amogdon in front and shields the Chroma Wing, which is pretty much an Amogdon like we discussed. So how do we progress this, this board? Like what do you do next? I think. Um, Best thing to do is not triple the stuff in here, <laughs> but look for reborn. So I'm here playing five, so looking for the reborn snake, so I can uh, get reborn Mike's nose. Then, other than that, I guess we could find Tifus Linger and more Amogonals, but it's, you know, I sold my brand twice already. It's pretty unlikely that we get more Amogonals on the board, as you get really lucky. This uh, Argus is really good because last time they played around Nadina, or they didn't play around it, but Nadina didn't get value, and they could play around Nadina in the future if they find Acolyte. Now I will take the triple. Uh, because I can Argus. So first, that I didn't want to make it a triple because it doesn't make any sense, right? But now it does because I actually have something to do after I tripled. I have poison to put on the board anyway, um, and I can make sure Nadina doesn't get uh, screwed over again and be guaranteed value. Uh, also, if they open with win free a Malignon, it doesn't just kill my Malignon right away, but I could also get value now having multiple taunts plays around win free pretty well. Uh, the brand is just big poison. They have like you know, not that many shields. We have, we actually beat them. So these people are hiring their ass off. I wasn't doing much, but because I leveled and chose the right cards and direction, I'm able to um, kind of scam them. I don't know if there's a scam. Like, I guess so. But uh, my board is full of poison and a big ass chroma wing. Um, I'm still here playing for reborn, and we actually got Bran and Lookout in the shop. Now I could go for it, but I'd have to sell too. Would you make that play? I'm not not gonna, cause. We can't even discover a Malignon, so it's not even worth it. If I sell to and play Brand Lookout, I can't even pick a Malignon because I would triple the existing ones on board. I had to find Seafood Slingers first, so buying those and doing nothing this round also seems way too slow. Um, so sad, I just do nothing. It's really hard to find upgrades here, uh, as mentioned before, besides Reborn and I guess Seafood Slinger into a Mulligan. Uh, there's another Beast player. They are they're going full Macaulcom now, so they got rid of their Death Rattle. Uh, high mains, which is kind of good for us because you know, big stats we can easily beat. Death Rattles is gonna be a little bit harder. Uh, so, that we're gonna put this Hook Tusk into the grave, even though I have a pretty nutty board compared to us. I also want to take a comment from one of my previous videos where I kept double Weaver on the board by Polyfocus Focus Gaming here. Obviously, you know a lot more about Battlegrounds, but it really seemed like you kept the Reavers one, two turns too long and should have just replaced them with Ags. So, I, yeah, the reason I take this comment is because I saw it a lot of people thinking I played too greedy during that game, but I got rewarded, right? So, if you play greedy, and you know you're probably stronger than your opponent, it's worth it. Now, I didn't think I had to uh, play a stronger board there, because I was gonna win anyway with a Golden Buster Baron already. Also, Ags means I can't really play uh, Macaw anymore if I do find that, which I happen to find, so I didn't want to play Death Rattle Max. And the Weavers are still a pair that I can triple into uh, a 4 Reaper, which would be amazing here on this board. And we did hit a different triple into 4 Reaper, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, I think I played it correctly. I didn't die there or lose fights, keeping the Weavers. So it's all about judging how strong are you compared to your opponent, how much risk are you willing to take in order to maybe get rewarded with a massive high roll. I bet you that if I got rewarded with high roll and rolled a Weaver in one of my next rolls, people probably wouldn't comment this on my video and would not, you know, question it. But just because I didn't high roll, you question it. It's about kind of um, like hindsight thinking, just making your as like your conclusion based on what actually happened instead of objectively looking at the potential that a certain play gives. So I hope this explains it more uh, for those of you who had questions of why I played so greedy that game. Uh, and this game is kind of the contrary, right? Like if you compare that game to this one, I was talking about the mech game with Reno. Uh, this one is just me going full on tempo trying to live so uh, I tried to play greedy at first with the car like all the six jobs we didn't get rewarded so I kind of backed off and I, then I went into an Abdina uh, Chroma Wing and somehow a Mulligan comp. I do have a Seafood Slinger, I found another Mulligan on. Uh, we still don't have Reborn though which is kind of sad but we do have another Mulligan coming on the board which is amazing. 
I guess. Uh, I still have my hero power, so I could hero power fives. Now, Lookout doesn't seem worth it. I can't really discover another Amalgadon, and I don't really care too much about buffs like stats. I never matter in this matchup since we're all just full poison. Uh, let's see if we can get a reborn here onto one of my Maxnas. And. Uh, Nope. Never. It just doesn't exist. Never mind, there it is! I don't think Zap is gonna be useful, so I'm just gonna play my cards here and see if we need to counter Brand more if this fight does end up going longer if I don't kill him. Uh, also, a quick reminder to uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed, since most of the people that do watch these videos actually, you know, are not subscribed, but if you like watching them, why not? Or to leave a like on the video. And one thing that I think would be interesting is if you guys have a really cool screenshot or a really cool game, a lot of people post them in Discord, uh, but you can also post them on Twitter and just add me at itsbench one and I might just take some cool screenshots and put them in these videos. I think it's amazing to just see cool compositions from people that you don't see every day. I know people post them on Reddit, but uh, I mean, Reddit, I don't really visit that too frequently, and I would prefer to see your guys' comp. So if you have a really cool board that you would want to show me, Post it in Discord or uh, add me on Twitter and uh, we, maybe I'll, I'll pull it up and discuss it on, on one of these videos. But yeah, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.